In this video, I want to uh, discuss Meru's airtime fairness solution. And airtime fairness obviously is a really critical component of any enterprise wireless LAN that seeks to be a switch replacement or a wired replacement because predictability is crucial. And in order to achieve predictability in the presence of a shared medium where you have different devices operating at different data rates and with different capabilities, it is absolutely important to be able to uh, essentially silo each device in terms of the amount of air time or resources that it uses. Now, 802.11 as a protocol is a MAC layer protocol and it is a contention based protocol, a CSMA CA based protocol, very similar to Ethernet where devices use some variant of binary exponential backoff, essentially a randomized backoff in order to access the channel and once they access the channel, they transmit their frame. One or more frames. And once they transmit these frames, they go back and start to contend for the channel when they have more to transmit. The interesting thing is that this contention, as defined by the original 802.11 standard, is really on a per packet basis. So just to you know, lay it out in terms of a timeline, you have a this is how the time dimension is, uh, I'm showing it here. You have some period of time where the channel was busy, and let's assume you have a couple of different transmitters, right? So you have station one and station two. Both of them see that the channel was busy at this point, and then once the channel becomes free, both of them wait for a certain period of time, and a companion video talks about the sort of actual protocol details. For the purpose of this video, it is important to understand that each of these devices then, once it waits for a certain period of time for the channel to be free, then starts counting down some back off value. Let's say in this particular case that, you know, station one picked a value of, what's that, four, three, two, one. So it picks, the, picks a value of four and station two picked a value of five. Right? So each of these devices started counting down and at the end of four slots, station one still saw that the channel was free and therefore it started transmitting. During this period, station two had a you know, back off value of one, therefore it couldn't transmit, therefore it stops counting down. Station one wins its transmission. It transmits one frame and then its intended receiver sends an acknowledgement for it. So this is the data and then station one continues. Right? Essentially, this entire phase starts again. So notice something really critical here. The first thing is, this is a multiple access protocol. The second thing is that we created or we started afresh after each data transmission. So essentially, it's a memoryless system to some extent. It, there's actually some nuances of 802.11 that cause the system to have memory because station two remembers this back off. We'll get into that in a separate video. But the point is the contention period is a memoryless system. After one transmission of data, the whole process starts again. How long is this data frame? It's irrelevant to starting this process again. So notice that if you have station one that transmits at one megabit per second, and station two that's transmitting at 300 megabits per second, they both contend pretty much the same at the end of each data transmission. So what does this mean? This means that unless you have some higher level way of controlling the amount of time that station one and station two use, station one will overwhelm the network. Because in terms of the contention, if they both use the same parameters, station one will win approximately half the time and station two will win half the time. When station one wins, it takes much longer, at least 300 times as long to transmit its frame as station two. So if I just lay this out in terms of time, station one, station two, station one, station two. Notice the amount of data being sent might be exactly the same. It's just that the amount of time taken by station two is far lower because it's going 300 times as fast. So if you just look at this, it's pretty clear that station one is actually dominating the air time, even though both of them are sending the same number of packets. As a result, the entire network comes closer to one megabit than 300 megabits. So the point here is, in a network where different devices share the same medium, but transmit at different data rates, there is a difference between packet time fairness or packet level fairness and time or resource level fairness. And the resource here, which is the common denominator, is one of time. 
So Meru pioneered this concept of airtime fairness wherein we are not trying to just equalize packets, though of course there is a mode in our system that allows us to do that, but in order to provide predictability, we equalize airtime. Station 1 and Station 2 will get the same amount of airtime. What Station 1 does with its airtime is its problem. Station 2 gets its airtime, what it does is its problem. So the idea is the following. We want to give Station 1 and then give a bucket of time for Station 2, during which time, because it's faster, it can pump in a lot more frames. And then Station 1, and then Station 2, etc. So notice that there are some situations where packet level fairness is appropriate. There are a lot of other situations where time level fairness is appropriate. And it's critical to have a system that can support multiple modes. Meru supports all the modes, but this airtime fairness or time-based fairness is our default mode because it leads to predictability. Now the question is how we do it.